welcome back everyone in the previous two videos of this playlist we discussed about all these pathologies of esophagus now in this video we'll be discussing about the remaining ones starting with zenker diverticulum so zenker diverticulum it is a false diverticulum and here in this picture you can see it is a out pouching of pharyngeal mucosa it is coming out like a sac it is coming out like a sac and it arises above the upper esophageal sphincter at the junction of esophagus and pharynx and it is present with dysphagia obstruction and halitosis halitosis means bad breath now moving towards the next pathology that is mallory weiss syndrome and boerhaave syndrome now we will be discussing both of them them together why together because most of the things are common but there is one difference now what's that so for that let's see this picture here now in this picture you can see that both this mallory weiss syndrome and boerhaave syndrome they both are tears in the wall of esophagus but in this mallory weiss syndrome this tear it is in the mucosa and submucosa only but in this boerhaave syndrome this rupture this tear is transmural it means it includes all the layers of esophageal wall and it is in distal third part of esophagus now we are clear with the difference what is the difference so this mallory weiss syndrome it is longitudinal laceration of mucosa or sub mucosa at the gastro esophageal junction it is limited to mucosa and sub mucosa and the reason can be due to severe vomiting due to severe vomiting and this mallory weiss syndrome it is usually due, due to alcoholism or bulimia nervosa and it is often present with hematemesis and abdominal or back pain may or may not present with this pain now this boerhaave syndrome this boerhaave syndrome it has a special auscultation sign and that is hamann sign this boerhaave syndrome on chest auscultation shows hamann sign now what is hamann sign it is a crushing and crackling sound which is heard only during boerhaave syndrome now the next pathology is plummer vinson syndrome now this plummer vinson syndrome it is a triad of three things that is dysphagia esophageal webs and iron deficiency anemia this triad is really important what it includes it includes dysphagia esophageal webs and iron deficiency anemia it is associated with risk of esophageal squamous cell carcinoma we will discuss this in few minutes about the carcinoma and also this plummer vinson syndrome it is associated with glossitis let's move towards the esophageal cancer now esophageal cancers can be of two types squamous cell carcinoma or adenocarcinoma if it is present in the upper 2/3 of esophagus in the upper 2/3 of esophagus then it is squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma it usually affects the lower 1/3 part of esophagus let's talk about the risk factors for squamous cell carcinoma the risk factors are alcohol use hot liquids caustic structures smoking achalasia and nitrous amine rich food whereas for adenocarcinoma the risk factors are chronic grd barrett esophagus obesity and tobacco smoking now for the prevalence this squamous cell carcinoma it is more common worldwide whereas adenocarcinoma it is more common in america and this esophageal cancer 
it is typically present with progressive dysphagia progressive dysphagia means dysphagia first for solid and after that for liquids and this esophageal cancer it has poor prognosis so this was all about pathology of esophagus i hope you liked the video if you like the video do hit the subscribe button